The IRS released a long-term capital gains tax rates for 2025. And let me tell you why this is important. Because people on their financial independence journey will need to know how they can live on their investments at a lower tax rate and maybe even tax-free with the long-term capital gains tax rates. And I'm looking to retire early. So this is the tax bracket I want to pay attention to when I live on my taxable brokerage account. And if you're wondering how millionaires become millionaires, it's because they understand that assets appreciate over time and just by holding the assets for the long term and they can pay a lower tax liability than the federal income tax. And if you're filing your taxes as a single individual, your first $48,350 will be taxed at 0%. And that's assuming that you have no other income sources and are just living on your investments. And that's an increase of about $1,300 from the year prior. The most common bracket is 15% if you're still actively employed or have multiple sources of income. And the income threshold is increased from $518,900 to $533,400. And that's an increase of $14,500. And if you're married and filing your taxes jointly, the 0% capital gains tax rates are being increased from $94,050 to $96,700. And this is what I want to pay attention to the most because I am married and I am looking to retire early with just qualified dividends and long-term capital gains. And I'll get into that much later on in this video. And the 15% capital gains tax rate is also being increased from $583,750 to $600,000. So if you have multiple income streams and you're most likely gonna be in the 15% capital gains tax bracket, which is still much lower than the federal income tax. And here are the capital gains tax rates for married couples filing their taxes separately and a head of household. They have all increased at the same percentage rate. But what hasn't changed is the 3.8% net investment income, which is something that's been in place since 2013 and kicks in at $200,000 for individuals and $250,000 for married couples filing their taxes jointly. This includes your interest, dividends, and capital gains. So keep that in mind if you're a high income earner. So what qualifies your investments for a long term capital gains tax? So keep in mind that I'm not going to mention real estate for this segment because the rules for capital gains on real estate are governed by their own set of rules. The common misconception about capital gains is that you have to pay taxes on both the principal and interest. And that's not the case at all. For this example, let's say that you have two point five million dollars in your tax brokerage account. And out of that two point five million that you invested over the course of 30 years, your cost basis is $800,000, or that's what you purchased in after-tax dollars. And that's your principal. So you don't pay taxes on that again. And out of that $2.5 million, you have $1.7 million in unrealized gains. And these are your earnings and interest and dividends that you earn over the years. So if you sell the investments that you held for less than a year, you're going to pay the federal income tax. We don't want that because the rates will be too high. Now, if you've held your investments for more than a year, then you're going to be taxed at 0, 15 or 20 percent. So if you bought a stock in July on July 1st, you need to hold the investment until July 1st in the following year to qualify for the long term cap capital gains tax. And something else that qualifies for long term capital gains is if your investments pay your pay you qualified dividends. So let's say your 2.5 million comes with a 2% annual dividend yield, assuming that it's all qualified dividends at $50,000 a year. It doesn't matter if you reinvest that dividend or get it paid out to you, you will still be taxed every year for earning your dividends at long term capital gains tax rates. And it's very important to know about the standard deductions. Because if you're looking to live on just your investments in 2025, you want to add $48,350 to the standard deduction of $15,000 as a single individual. And that $63,350 is actually going to be tax free because it's before the standard deduction. If you're married and filing your taxes jointly, you could withdraw your earnings up to $126,701 in 2025 and pay 0% capital gains taxes. So what do you think is better? Investing 500 bucks a month, making 10% return, or investing $1,000 a month, making a 7% return on investment? You can't figure out how much you can invest without a budget. There's no way around it. I personally tested out the budgeting app called YNAB, and it's not just an app that can track your income and expenses, but it can even help you create a plan to pay down your student loans, car loans, personal loans, or credit cards 
a lot faster. So if you're ready to change your life by getting out of the paycheck to paycheck cycle, you can get a free trial without any credit card information by using the link in the description below. So let me give you an example here. Let's say you are single and retired early in the year 2025 with $100,000 withdrawal from your taxable brokerage account and assuming that is all earnings and interest. With the $15,000 standard deduction, your taxable income is going to be $85,000. And that's not counting any other deductions. So just to keep the keep this example simple. Okay, so the first $48,350 of that $100,000 is going to be taxed at 0%. Then the remaining $36,650 is going to be taxed at 15% or almost $5,500. So your marginal tax rate is going to be 15%, but the effective tax rate right here is going to be almost 6.5% because if you divide 5,500 here by $85,000 in taxable income, you're only paying 6.5% in effective tax. This is so much cheaper than paying the federal and state income taxes, right? And let me give you another example here. Let's say you are married and finally your taxes join me. You both decided to retire early in the year 2025 on $120,000 from your taxable investments, all in earnings and interest, okay? Not your principal. After the standard deduction, your taxable income is going to be $90,000. And assuming that you've held your investments for at least a year, that $90,000 in long-term capital gains is going to be taxed at 0%. So both your marginal and effective tax rate is going to be at 0%, assuming that you have no other income sources. You could literally retire early with a taxable brokerage account making $126,701, and that's before the 2025 standard deduction, because your first $30,000 is deducted from your gross earnings at $120,000. How awesome is that to retire early with let's say $3 million on a 4% withdrawal rate and pay absolutely no taxes. So I am looking to retire early by the year 2040 and the 0% long-term capital gains tax rate could be increased to about $140,000 with a 2.5% annual inflation rate. And that's not counting the standard deduction in the future. And that's also assuming that the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act remains in place after December 31st, 2025. And we've heard many debates in the past that politicians want to raise capital gains tax rates in the future, or maybe even tax unrealized gains, but we'll, we'll save that topic for another day. And I'm not going to worry about something I can't control, but I really hope that they maintain the same capital gains tax rates in the future. And if you haven't had a chance to check out my website, go to firesetcher.com slash resources to download your free financial independence calculator to find out how much you need to save and invest every month to achieve your FIRE number. And if you want to take another step further, you can join my private community to join other like-minded individuals who are actively investing to achieve financial independence. And this has been another beast of a video and I hope you got a lot out of it.